So in the first question of this first exercise, we have been given a few set of figures with punched holes and we need to find the axis of symmetry for them. Let us now see the first set of figures on the canvas. Now by definition we all know that axis of symmetry which is also known as the line of symmetry is a line about which a figure is divided into two equal halves and when the figure may be folded about that line we will see that the two equal halves will coincide. For example, if we consider the first figure of this set which is figure A and we draw a line such that it divides the figure into two equal halves as is being done by this vertical line and these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide. So for this figure, figure A, we can say that this line is the axis of symmetry. Now moving on, let us see if we can have more than one axis of symmetry for a given figure. For example, if we again divide this figure in two equal halves using this horizontal line now such that these are the two equal halves and we fold the figure about this line, we will again see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide. So for this figure, figure A, we can conclude that it will have more than one axis of symmetry and these two lines will be the axis of symmetry for this figure. Now moving on to the next figure which is figure B. So based on the position of the punched holes in this figure and the symmetry of this figure, if we join the two opposite vertices, these two opposite vertices using this line, we will see that the figure is now divided into two equal halves and if we fold the figure about this line, we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide. So now for this figure, figure B, we can say that this line is the axis of symmetry. Let us now see what happens in case of figure C. Now based on the position of the punched holes and the symmetry of the figure, if we divide this figure into two equal halves using this horizontal line such that these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line, we will again see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide. So for this figure, figure C, this line becomes the axis of symmetry. Let us now see what happens in case of figure D. Now again, looking at the orientation of the punched holes and the symmetry of the figure, if we divide the figure using this horizontal line such that these are the two equal halves of the figure and if we fold the figure about this line, we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line again as the axis of symmetry. Let us now see what happens in the next set of figures. So in figure E, we again have a square as the figure and based on the position of the punched holes and the symmetry of the figure, let us again divide the figure into two equal halves using this vertical line such that these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line, we will again see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide, making this line to be the axis of symmetry. Now again, let us see if we can have more than one axis of symmetry for this figure. Now if we divide this figure again into equal halves using this horizontal line now and if we fold this figure about this line, we will see that these two equal halves of the figure will again coincide making this horizontal line now as also one of the axis of symmetry for this figure. Now based on the orientation of the punched holes, let us see if we can have even more axis of symmetry for this figure. So again, if we draw a line joining these two opposite vertices of the figure such as this, 
we'll see that the figure is again divided into two equal halves and when the figure is folded about this line we'll again see that both the equal halves of the figure will go inside making this line also as one of the axis of symmetry of this figure let us see if we can find one more axis of symmetry for this figure so again if we join now these two opposite vertices of the figure using this line we'll again see that we'll get the two equal halves which are these and again if we fold the figure about this line we'll again see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line also as one of the axis of symmetry for this figure so to summarize the axis of symmetry for this figure we can say that these are the four lines which one by one will divide the figure into two equal halves and will serve as the axis of symmetry when this figure is folded along these lines so for this figure we can say there there can be more than one axis of symmetry and these lines are the axis of symmetry let us now see what we get in case of figure f now based on the orientation of the figure and the position of the punched holes we'll see that if we divide this figure in two equal halves using this vertical line such that these are the two equal halves and again if we fold this figure along this line we'll see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide and we'll have only one axis of symmetry for this figure where this line which we have got the red line is the axis of symmetry for this figure moving on to figure g which is in the form of a triangle and the based on the position of the punched holes if we divide the figure in two equal halves using this vertical line such that these are the two equal halves of the figure and if we fold this figure about this line we'll see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line as one of the axis of symmetry of the figure and then in figure h we'll again see that it's the same figure but is being rotated by 90 degrees to the right hand side so if we divide this figure using this horizontal line such that these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line we'll see that both the equal halves will coincide making this line as the axis of symmetry for this figure figure h let us now see what happens in the next set of figures moving on to figure i based on the position of the punched holes and the orientation of the figure if we divide this figure in two equal halves using this vertical line such that these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line we'll again see that the two equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line as the axis of symmetry for this figure next in figure j again based on the position of the punched holes let us see how many axis of symmetry are we going to get let us first divide this figure in two equal halves using this vertical line such that again these are the two equal halves and if we fold the figure about this line we'll again see that this line serves as one of the axis of symmetry of this figure now based on the position of the punched holes let us see if we can have one more axis of symmetry for this figure so if we again divide this figure using this horizontal line in two equal halves such that these are the two equal halves of the figure and if we fold this figure about this line we'll see that the two equal halves of the figure will coincide so we can say that even this line is also one of the axis of symmetry for this figure so collectively for this figure we can say that we'll have two axis of symmetry based on the position of the punched holes and the orientation of the figure now moving on to figure k so based on the position of the punched holes and the symmetry of the figure let us now divide this figure into two equal halves using this vertical line 
such that these are the two equal halves and if the figure may be folded about this line, we'll see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide. So we can say that this line is the axis of symmetry for this figure. Let us now see if we can have more axis of symmetry for this figure. So again, if we divide this figure now using this horizontal line such that these are the two equal halves of the figure and if we divide this figure about this line, we will again see that the equal halves, the two equal halves will coincide making this line also as one of the axis of symmetry for the figure. Let us again see if we can have more axis of symmetry for the Let us again divide this figure in two equal halves using this line such that these are the two equal halves of the figure and if we fold this figure about this line, we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line also as one of the axis of symmetry for this figure. Let us now divide this figure if we can using another line. So we will see that this line again divides this figure into two equal halves where these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line, we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line also as one of the axis of symmetry for this figure. So collectively we can say that we have four axes of symmetry for this figure and these are the four lines which represents them. Let us now move on to the last figure of this question which is figure K L. Now in figure L based on the position of the punched holes and the orientation of the figure if we divide the figure into two equal halves using this vertical line such that these are the two equal halves and if we fold this figure about this line we will see that both the equal halves of the figure will coincide making this line to be the axis of symmetry for this figure. So this is how, these are the different ways like how can we find the axis of symmetry for different figures based on their symmetry and the position of the punched holes which was the case in this question and this is how we are going to answer the first question. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.